Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Barbara, welcome to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you're new, thank you for coming. And if you're one of my faithful followers, I appreciate you. Absolutely. So today, um, I wasn't going to record anything, but I decided to turn the video camera on because I had this thought and I thought I would um, share it with you guys. I came out to the garden, to the high tunnel, and I had a little bit of sadness. Here's the reason why. I don't have anything to harvest. <laughs> I don't have anything to harvest and that feels so strange and there was a twinge of sadness um and i'll take you around but i guess we're in this phase from summer to fall and i'm so used to every day that i come out here there is something to harvest and today i don't think there's anything to harvest i don't think any of the fall stuff is ready i probably could get a you know a couple of leaves of lettuce or something like that but it's not ready, ready. You know what I'm saying? Where there's excess or abundance, you know, that type of thing. And it got me to thinking, you know, I kind of sat in that moment for a while, for a minute, I should say, I don't have anything to harvest. I can't believe I don't, I'm not gonna fill up baskets today and take them back home. And so a couple of things that I wanted to share, let's just have a little talk is you know how in the midst of the summer season, it's so busy, it's so hectic. And y'all have heard me come on here and say that, hey, the garden is about to overtake me. I feel overwhelmed. It's a lot. It's big. And then I've also said like, man, I'm grateful. And I and I sit in both places, right? I have sat in both places. I have sat in the place of gratitude, but I've also sat in the place of overwhelm. And today when I come out here, there's no overwhelm. There's really nothing for me to harvest or pick. There may be there may be some jalapeno peppers because I still have like two or three um, jalapeno peppers left in the high tunnel. But that's the only thing hanging on by a thread of summer. Every excuse me, everything else in the high tunnel, everything outside is all fall stuff, and it's not ready yet. And so the thought came to me is that you know I have said in both places the overwhelm and the abundance, and it just goes to show that to everything there is a season and in those moments where you feel like you just can't you know pick another cherry tomato or another berry or whatever the case may be know that this too shall pass and know there's going to come a day when that particular fruit or harvest is not going to be there because it's time for the next season right um and some of you depending on what's on your end you you may still be getting a lot of your summer stuff right for me, I'm in zone 7A, and so summer is is pretty much done. We are um, scheduled to have our first frost on Tuesday, um, Tuesday of next week. So that's in like two or three days. Um, it's supposed to get down to 32, and then the next night it's supposed to be 31, and I think that's like three days in a row. Um, and it's so funny because our uh, projected frost date is October the 19th, which is actually, I think, Wednesday. So. You know, it's not always right on the money, but it is right on the money. So summer is really over in zone 7A. It really is. Now, in the high tunnel, like I said, I still have a couple of peppers. And um, I took out all the tomatoes. I took out, I think I may have one bell pepper plant. Maybe. We'll go back there and check. But for the most part, it's done. So that was just a strange feeling. And I thought I would turn on the camera because I'm sure somebody else has felt that way you're like oh you kind of like feel the let down although two weeks ago we might have been complaining that it was too much so relish the moments that you have in the garden when there is abundance even though it tires you it wears you out relish it right because one day that particular fruit is going to go dormant it's not its season and then you have to wait for the next thing's season so that was one thing that i wanted to kind of just 
bring up to encourage you and just I thought it was you know funny as I came into the garden I'm like I can't believe I don't have anything to harvest like I don't have anything to harvest I don't have baskets full of stuff that is just so so strange so very strange but then the other thought that came to mind is you know what because of the harvest I had this past summer even though I don't have anything physically to harvest today in lots of baskets I actually did reap the benefits of my harvest today. I've been in the kitchen cooking all day long, um, which I enjoy cooking. I do enjoy cooking when I enjoy cooking, if that makes sense. <laughs> but generally I do like to cook, but I'm not like a love to cook, want to cook every day. But when I, you know, in the mood, but anyway, I made, um, I did the stuffed bell peppers. If you guys saw my video, maybe two videos ago, I was talking about my bell peppers and how I chopped them up for the freezer, but then I saved some to do stuffed bell peppers for the first time. So I did that today um, and they turned out great. I didn't turn the video camera on. Um, I also made homemade croutons. Y'all, the bomb, amazing. I'm gonna have to show you, I'm gonna have to show you the homemade croutons. I mean, it's simple. So it's not, I don't feel like I'm showing you something, but I just wanna show it to you, okay? I have to show you when I do that again. That was my first time making homemade croutons. Next level, next level. Why would I ever buy croutons again? But back to the point. So the point is when I was making the stuffed bell peppers, you know, it's usually like some type of ground beef or rice or something like that. So I had like a, um, a vegetarian meat protein and I did rice and um, it was calling for like diced tomatoes. And I was thinking, I was like, I don't really want diced tomato. Like I don't want a tomato chunks in mine. And I know my husband's not gonna like it that way. But as I was reaching for the can of diced tomatoes, I remembered that I had tomato juice from when I made tomato sauce earlier this year from my tomatoes last year. And I didn't show you guys that. I will show you and bring you along when I make tomato sauce this year. Um, but anyway, I made tomato sauce for the first time earlier this year. And as you're doing the tomatoes, you know, I didn't have a lot of paste tomatoes. I had a lot of cherry tomatoes and slicing and paste. It was a mixture. It was runny, but I saved the liquid or whatever. And I was like, that's going to come in handy for some that is going to come in handy. It came in handy today. So instead of me doing the diced tomatoes, I poured the tomato juice that I had, um, canned and saved, um, from when I made tomato sauce earlier, which means when I do it again this time, you better believe I'm saving that tomato juice. Y'all, it was so good. So I had the tomato flavor and it helped kind of pull everything together from a consistency standpoint without seeing the chunks of diced tomatoes in there. And so I'm like, man, that is from my harvest that I had earlier. So even though I don't physically have anything to harvest today with my hands, I've reaped the benefits in my kitchen today from the harvest that I've already had. The stuffed bell peppers, all those bell peppers came from my garden. I did not have to go to the store. I did. It was a total of 12. And this is, a, this is, my, this is the last of my bell peppers. I could have been doing that all summer long, y'all. I could have been doing that all summer long. You know, they're probably good to freeze. You can just take them out you know, for lunch or for dinner when you don't feel like cooking. So you better believe that's on the menu for next summer for sure. But all of those bell peppers came from the garden. So I didn't have anything physically to harvest today, but I did have a harvest because I was using the stuff from my garden, y'all. Do you see? Do you see how it all comes together? It made me so happy. And then I did sourdough croutons. I did um, homemade croutons. The croutons were from sourdough bread that I made in my own kitchen with my own hands um, and I used, um, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else did I make? I made, oh, I made this soup today. I made this um, sausage potato soup, right? And it had like onions and um, garlic, homemade, y'all, homemade. I used my garlic, I used my onions. So again, I think you get the point. I did not have anything physically to harvest with my hands today. And it made me a little sad, but I didn't sit there long. I thought one, you know what? When I was complaining or feeling overwhelmed, remember that everything has a season, right? And so even though one of those seasons or you're in a place where it could be hard, 
don't forget that that season is going to pass. And one day you're going to want to pick a whole bunch of tomatoes and the tomatoes are not going to be there because it's not going to be their season. Second thing is, even though I didn't have anything physically to harvest today, I reaped the benefits of my previous harvest. As I cooked all day in the kitchen, I was constantly grabbing stuff that came from the garden. Y'all, I just, that, that just, that revelation just kind of blew my mind. And I just want to come on video and share it. That's it. I don't have anything, you know, exciting to show you. I mean, well, the garden is always exciting, but you know what I mean. Um, I just wanted to come on and share that with you. I want you to be encouraged, right? If you're in this transition phase, you may have decided to not do a fall garden. So the next time you garden may not be into the spring or to the summer. And so you're in that phase of, huh, I kind of wish I would have started something or, huh, I'm glad I have a break, but I sure wish I had some fresh produce. Or you may be doing a fall garden like me and you may be in that transition phase where nothing is quite ready yet for the fall for you to have an abundance and to harvest. And so you're in that waiting period, whichever camp you're in, take these lessons because I guarantee you, if you had a summer garden, you have some harvest that's on your kitchen counter, that's in your freezer, that's in your freeze dry, you freeze dry, dehydrate or something. You have had something that you could eat from your from the work of your hands right so i just want to share that just be encouraged but i will take you around and show you a couple of things i want to show you um how the beets are doing um and then i'll show you a couple of things outside okay so y'all these is this is the beet experiment remember i started beets in soil blocks because i was having some pretty bad germination when i direct sowed in the ground and i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that have come up so I think that is 10 out of 12, I think it was, how many bucks? It might have been 10 out of 15. But anyway, I'm going to transplant these and put them in the ground uh, because they have come up. And I can't imagine that they're not going to grow because these are soil blocks. So it's not like it's in the cups or whatever. Uh, so these are soil blocks. So I'm assuming they should be just fine when I put them in the ground. Okay, so these are some other seeds. This is some Swiss chard. It hasn't germinated yet. And I also did a new type of spinach called the Galilee spinach that a friend gifted me. It's supposed to have like a 25 or 30 day maturity. It has not come up yet. Squash, I mean not squash, spinach takes forever. So it hasn't come up yet. One thing that I've noticed with germination is that as the temperatures have gotten cooler, even the stuff that normally takes um, a pretty quick time to germinate is taking longer, um, which you know, it's best, um, germination happens better when there is, you know, a certain temperature, you know, I think 75 to 85. So when it's, when it's um, hot, hotter, because in the springtime, when we're starting our seeds, like in the house, you want to put them on a heat mat to warm up the seed because it needs to be a certain temperature in order to germinate. So I have noticed that having the seeds in the high tunnel, uh, they're taking a lot longer to germinate, which is fine. I mean, they still germinate, but it's not, you know, quick as in three days is my normal rate. So anyway so let me take you around and i'll show you um the garden outside first let me show you my mint look at that oh it's so bountiful so i guess if i wanted to harvest mint i probably could i have enough of it there but the reason why i showed you that if you guys remember i had it in like a smaller pot on the seed starting table um because i did i didn't want to put it in bed so if you've never grown mint before don't put it in a raised bed unless that's what you want to be in the raised bed forever and ever. And that's the only thing you want in the raised bed because it's highly, what's the word? It spreads. It takes over. It's invasive. Yeah, that's the word. It's very invasive. I learned that my first year gardening. Um, and I, somebody told me and I was like, oh, okay. So I quickly got out of the raised bed and put it in a pot. So I always do it in pots or in a very contained space. So it was in a pot. It wasn't doing that great. Um, but as soon as I put it in this bigger pot, it has taken off. It has taken off. And so I had some, um, the other day in my lemonade. So good. So good. So I guess I could harvest mint if I wanted to. So I'm proud of the mint. So it just goes to show you that sometimes when your stuff is not doing good, um, it may need, especially like a container, it may need a bigger container. It may just need, you know, new soil or something like that. You know, it's all not, I'm not gonna say it's all trial and error, but I want to just encourage you that if you have something like in a pot or a container that's not doing as well, try putting it in a bigger pot, try changing the soil, 
fertilization, something like that, and um, see if that does the trick. Look at these two playing and loving on each other. They do this every every evening. And it's so funny because Max, who is the black lab. Hey Max, you heard your name? Okay, he's gonna roll around. So black Max, which is the black lab, of course is obviously much smaller than the South African Mastiff. And that South African Mastiff could, could literally kill Max. Uh, but Max is always picking on Sunica, which is the Mastiff. I'm like, if Sunica wanted to, she could really kill you. And I get nervous sometimes. My husband always says, baby, they're playing. He's like, because if she wanted to really get at her, she would. So it looks like they're really into it, but they're they're just playing. They do this all the time. Y'all, look at the outside garden. Ah, so different. So very different. So this is the only stuff that's left out here, which is the fall stuff. So you can see I have the cabbage there, which some insects had gotten into, some little pest. But I'm hoping it'll still be okay, is what I'm hoping. Then you can see the greens. Those are a mixture of turnip greens and collard greens. All of those look relatively um, healthy. So that's good. And again, I probably could harvest some of these as smaller baby greens. I wouldn't get a whole lot. Those leaves are pretty big on the collard greens, but it's only like two plants. So those are doing good. I'll walk you down here. These are some that I sold later. More cabbage. And then I think I have a couple pieces of kale out here. So y'all know how I was saying that I was debating on whether or not I was going to plant more stuff in the outside garden. Um, I did this early on in the summer season, so to speak. So the stuff that's like, you know, fully mature, I probably did it the first part of September. So it's probably been in the, in the ground six weeks or so. Um, and so I think I could definitely plant more stuff out here that could survive a frost. Um, but my husband reminded me of something. He was like, now keep in mind that if you plant, and I'm definitely, definitely not, was never considering planting the whole space. It's just too much. Um, but I thought about just like completing the rows, like, as you can see, like I have like two rows, like in the middle of the garden, in the middle of two rows and I, for aesthetics, aesthetics only, I just would like for it to be two full complete rows all the way down. I know, call me crazy, but my husband reminded me, he's like, now remember you plant that when you're harvesting that it's going to be cold like real cold are you going to want to be out here in 40 30 20 degree weather harvesting your greens he said because of course in the high tunnel it's not going to be like that you come out here in the middle of the day in the high tunnel and let's say it's 40 degrees outside it's like 65 in there it feels great but not so outside are you really going to be want to be harvesting out here a ton of stuff in freezing weather and I got to thinking about that thing. And I was like, uh, you may have a point. And my mom, I'm thinking, well, just be for a few minutes. I won't be out here a long time. But, I mean, this is not a lot. So it shouldn't take long to harvest. But I guess if it's cold, hmm, let's just stay 30 minutes. Do I want to do that? So I don't think I'm going to plant anything else in the outside garden. I think I'm just going to concentrate on the high tunnel and just work that. And then I just wanted to see how this would do. So our first frost, like I said, it's supposed to be coming up um, in just a few days. So it'll be interesting to see how this does, which I know that the greens and stuff, they, they actually taste better after a first frost. Um, they, I'm not gonna cover them at all. Um, and we're gonna see what happens and how they do, which I think they'll be fine, because they should be. I mean, they sh they're frost, um, frost tender, frost hardy. I'm not really sure, one of those. Um, Man, it feels so good out here. It feels so good. I love the like the the um, colors back there. That's nice. Um, so I think that's it for the. I think that's it for the fall garden. I think so. In terms of the outside, I got plenty of stuff in the hot tunnel. So this was more of an experiment to see what would happen, you know, and not do it full scale. What would happen? What would you know? Would it survive? How long would it survive? How long would it keep going? 
and not necessarily depending on this. So of course, that's why the majority of the stuff is in the high tunnel. Um, but it's an experiment. I want to see what happens in that way. Next year, I'll know, do I want to do more of this, less of this? And uh, we'll see how it is when I have to harvest this little bit if it's freezing cold. We'll see how it goes. <sighs> so anyway, um, so what I'm going to do now, I just have to water. Um, I came out here to water um, everything. I'm usually, I'm right now, I'm watering like every couple of days because it just hasn't been um, as hot, which is great. So I'm going to water um, and then that's it. That's going to be a wrap. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I just wanted to turn on the camera and share that, you know, lesson or that just epiphany that I had. Because if y'all could have saw my face when I walked out here, I was like, I ain't got nothing to harvest. Oh, nothing to harvest. And then immediately the Holy Spirit was like, um, but what else, what's all the stuff you use today in your kitchen? Like it's coming. It's coming. You don't have anything physically to harvest today, but you did have a harvest in your kitchen today. So let that encourage you. Thank you so much for um, stopping by today. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and follow along with me on this journey. Um, I'll pop a couple of videos up here so that you can see um, some other videos as you wait to the next upload. Thank you so much. Remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow to gardening is a journey i'm sorry <laughs> something went down my throat the wrong way gardening is a journey let's grow together i'll see you next time friends